now I'd like to show you how to install a knife uh, in the tissue slicer, the 7000 SMZ2. Here you see one of the ceramic blades in its protective holder, which prevents you from uh, cutting yourself, uh, uh, which usually will generate some paperwork and some embarrassment. Uh, if you remember correctly, this screw over here is uh, oppositely threaded than normal. So, and this one's normal. So you loosen the screws. There's a washer and a little nylon uh, uh, washer under there, under the steel washer. You loosen this to the point where you can slide it into place. If you don't have these loosened enough, it's a little bit more difficult. There is a cutout on the knife holder. Once it's in place and it's butted up against the rear of the knife holder, you can tighten it down. And yes, even I have to think about uh, which way uh, that's used to tighten uh, this screw and because it's opposite so it's turning to the left you want to make sure that the blade is on the little shelf There we go, it just dropped into place. Uh, so it's lefty tidy on this one, righty tidy on this one. And once the blade is mounted, you can remove the cover. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put the OptiCal system in place. So again, the bath is in the load position because you want uh, plenty of clearance between uh, everything in the knife. You don't want to dull it. You plug in uh, the uh, OptiCal system. Blade, select blade alignment. If you can see that, uh, let me move this back. There we go. Let's go back to menu. Select blade alignment. Enter. Get the manual and adjustment tools. Fit the alignment device and a new blade, which I've done. Uh, return. If you press return, it'll exit you from this uh, operation, or if you hit slice, it will continue. It asks you what kind of blade that you put in there, a stainless steel blade or a ceramic blade. In this case, I put a ceramic blade in, hit enter. Now it's going to move the blade to alignment position. So go back a step uh, you press return press slice to continue so now the system will carefully move the blade to alignment position it will raise the stage so the blade is scanned by the optical scanner Okay, so first thing you want to do is loosen 
the screw on the bottom so it's snug but not really loose. These two have to be fixed tight. This set screw or grub screw is going to push up and down on the blade holder assembly allowing it uh, to properly align. Uh, I will mention unfortunately it doesn't come with the system but this requires a three millimeter hex key that would go into that uh, set screw or grub screw. So now we're just going to simply press uh, slice to vibrate and it's going to measure the Z alignment of that blade. Now I know I've already pre-aligned this but I know from experience it only will take very small increments to change that. Now that was maybe a, an eighth of a turn. I'll hit slice again and now you see that um, this is up to 0.9 microns and you always want to shut it off when you're uh, doing this alignment because you don't want your uh, Allen key to go careening back and forth inside the little hole there. So you make a very tiny adjustment, let it uh, oscillate. Okay, I removed uh, some of the z-axis deflection to 0.7 micrometers now. If you find that the numbers are getting larger each time you test it, it means you may have gone past the correct point and you need to sort of back off a little bit. Almost at point two. It's between two and three tenths of a micron. Okay. For all intents and purposes, uh, you can play with this as long as you like, but. Uh, uh, I find that uh, getting it to 0 0.2 is quite sufficient and uh, you don't want to take up your entire uh, uh, time uh, fiddling with uh, the blade adjustment. So um, it says now return to exit. So you press return. It asks you, do you wish to exit the blade, al blade alignment routine and remove the alignment device? Hit return to go back to the previous step. Hit slice to exit. So now it's lowering the stage. And it will retract the arm. And you can carefully remove the OptiCal system from the instrument. At this point, I would either put the, this blade cover on or I would use this magnetically held blade cover to protect yourself from injury. Oops, it was already in home position. Excuse me. Uh, I'll wait till it's done. Now I'll hit load bath. So it goes all the way down. Okay, so now I will carefully slide the tray into position. 
Now I'd hit load bath and allow it go to the home position. And now you're ready to mount your specimen and uh, load buffer in this tray, put some ice in this outer tray if you so desire. If you put ice in there, make sure that your melt water clamp is closed. Again, once the ice melts, you want to get rid of the water so you can put more in. So you just get a beaker and you undo the clip and let the water flow out of the chamber. It's really uh, quite nice and simple. Uh, we don't like things to be too complex. If you find your specimen is too high or too low, you can press the, the height button here and you can adjust the height up and down, uh, uh, moving it by 10 microns per sec uh, uh, or 50 microns, uh, whatever you like. We're not going to change that right now, so we'll shut the height mode off. So now we're ready to uh, mount the sample and uh, EMS uh, provides uh, in their catalog a tissue mounting glue which is uh, a cyanoacrylate type glue which uh, you can take and put on the bottom of your tissue uh, after blotting a little bit of the excess buffer off or water off uh, put your cyanoacrylate glue down Put your tissue down, uh, hold it firmly in place for a few seconds, then you know you can put a few drops of buffer on it to keep it moist and fill the tray to the proper uh, sectioning level, which is generally at just a few millimeters above the top of the tissue that you're working with. So what I'll do next is I will use some low temperature agar to act as a block of tissue to cut and show you how that all goes. In this segment I'd like to talk a little bit about sample mounting and what we'll use is the uh, adjustable tilt stage from the 7000 SMZ slicer and uh, we're going to pretend that this is uh, uh, your mouse brain um, ideally you want it uh, uh, mounted in a way that it, it maintains its rigidity. Well, we have some tissue mounting glue here. I'll put the uh, part number up uh, from the catalog. Uh, so generally what we do is, and I'm, I'm not going to glue this little piece of aluminum to the uh, to the stub is you would have the brain in buffer and we would be working as quickly as we could uh, we would put a little of the tissue adhesive uh, down and we would mount the brain Hold it firmly for just a second or two and we'll just pretend that it's stuck there. Um, and then once it's stuck, what I like to do quickly is is this is just some 2% uh, low temperature agarose is I like to make different, uh, what I call blocks and dams. Um, one of the biggest problems one encounters in cutting tissues is the ability to keep it from getting pushed by the knife if you're going too fast. So what I would do is I would glue this on the back side of the brain and sometimes I would glue it along sides. Some people will even embed the entire brain in low temperature agarose, um, but for the vast majority of people they will not. So we will pretend that the, you know this is inside the tissue slicer and your knife is coming along and going in this direction. 
So, and it's oscillating back and forth, of course. And the whole idea of this is to just add a little bit more rigidity uh, to the back side of the brain so it doesn't uh, deflect in this direction. Remember, if your cutting advance is faster than your actual blade is cutting, you're not cutting, you're pushing. And pushing is not healthy for your tissue nor your sections. So that's why I put a little uh, agarose backstop. This happens to be 2%. And a lot of times I'll do 3% or even higher to make it really very, very rigid. And again, it's very easy to clean off. The substance is relatively inexpensive. Now I put some red food coloring in, so when we put the... Uh, we're going to cut some of this uh, agarose in the machine here in a minute. Um, it's just that in you know clear buffer, um, the section is really tough to see if I leave it its normal translucent uh, uh, color. So I added a little uh, food coloring to it just to, to make it stand out a little bit better. But that's sort of how you would uh, set it up. Um, whether or not the rear part of the brain is important to you or not, you might just slice that off so there's a nice flat spot to, uh, uh, to adhere the agarose to. And um, that's uh, a little bit about tissue mounting. So um, now I will just uh, clean this up, uh, dry it off, and I will put a small amount of, uh, well, first of all, I'm going to downsize this little block because we don't need something quite that big so I'm just gonna cut it in half and I'm going to mount that little bit if I can pick it up I didn't bring a pair of forceps I probably should have and also this is why I'm wearing gloves because uh, I don't want to get my fingers all stuck um, and once it's stuck you can further trim it to your liking works best if you have nice uh, square edges but that's a luxury you don't get with the brain so we're going to let that set up for a second and then we're going to go over and mount that uh, in a tissue slicer. As demonstrated yesterday, we set up a cutting window where the blade is at the beginning of our simulated uh, uh, block of tissue that we wish to cut. And the stopping point is uh, just beyond that. Uh, the next step is to uh, adjust the height um, so we can quickly get to uh, our tissue. Um, on the menu over here on the side, you can see that I've got the red uh, height button engaged, which allows me to adjust how much to move the stage up uh, or down by um, and it says on the menu uh, load uh, uh, advance uh, will be fast up or down depending on which you push return would be move up by 50 microns in this case. Um, slice would be moved down. Uh, the datum height, which is its initial point, is 200. Um, so what we will do is uh, we'll press slice. Oops, move down, we want return. So we want to raise the stage by 50 micron increments and uh, we just speed that up. You can always go way too fast 
you don't want to hack into your tissue and take a very big chunk out of it initially. Uh, I don't see the blade just beginning to wet right now. So we're going to move it uh, upwards a little bit further so the whole knife blade is sort of wet. And since I don't have really the best lighting here, normally you would have a goose lamp or some additional uh, lighting. Uh, we will just uh, uh, say that that's at the correct height. We will shut that off. And now we will let it section and it's going to take the first slice, hit its cutting window, I'll press return because I'm not in auto slice mode. It will increment 200 microns. I'll turn slice on. And we'll make another slice. I'm going to slow the advance down a little bit. Oops. Put it into repeat mode. And now we're going to let it slice away. Well, unfortunately, even with uh, food coloring, uh, you can see these very, very thin, translucent uh, uh, sections of agarose or agar uh, floating around in the water. As the instrument sections away, we're down to like uh, we've done uh, 17 or 18 sections now. Um, you can see them floating around in the water, I think. Uh, and we'll try to uh, get you a better angle. I brought in some additional lighting. Normally, you can purchase this system with a light and magnifier, uh, which you can mount on the top. So here you can see these very, very fine little sections, I think, uh, floating around. I'll uh, pause it for a second. There it is 
it's really difficult to uh, to see at 200 microns. But uh, they are in there, and there's a whole bunch of them. And here you can see one wrapped around the end of the stick. So I just uh, halted it uh, by pressing the slice button, and now the screen says, Press return to abort, uh, slice to continue, and now we'll just let it uh, continue for a couple more slices, just so you can get the idea. Now it's, it's going down far enough where it's cutting some of the cyanoacrylate uh, tissue glue. You can see the can't see the section, but the glue separates away. But I think now is the time to, uh, to halt it because we don't want to run our ceramic blade into hard material. Uh, these will last uh, quite uh, some time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off uh, auto repeat. Uh, well, first of all, I'm going to press return to abort. Shut off auto repeat, go to manual slice, press and hold load bath. So now it will lower the bath all the way down to its lower lowermost position. And retract the knife and I'll stir things up here and you can see I think maybe some of the sections floating around uh, that we took. Uh, I'm going to have to uh, maybe use some egg white next time instead of some agarose uh, uh, just for better visualization. Uh, but this is the uh, the way the SMZ-2, the EMS-7000 SMZ uh, cutting system works. And what we'll do is we will attach the knife guard so we do not accidentally injure ourselves. This can be slid forward and we can remove our specimen um, and uh, uh, then you can scoop up and by your preferred method usually a camel held brush works really well uh, to pick up all these uh, sections and if you're using fresh brain and you're bubbling oxygen uh, uh, a lot of times you'll want to remove those uh, sections right away and get them into a more controlled environment. So now we can slide off our tray bath and clean that up. And now we would cover our knife with the handling tool. Remember that this turns the opposite direction to loosen. put my finger on the back and I slide and remove the knife. I would rinse it in distilled waters and save it so I could use it another day. Those last quite, uh, quite a long time. I would just use a razor blade to 
to carefully clean off the chuck and then if you so desired you could use a fine metal polish to uh, polish that up. Uh, the tray with the ice and everything uh, certainly uh, that gets rinsed with distilled water and uh, dried. Normally I would take a uh, and remove the cutting head, uh, rinse it in distilled water as well as the, the dis associated screws to hold it on. Uh, I would wipe down the cutting head to make sure all the salts were off. I'd wipe the surfaces of the instrument down to remove uh, all the salts. And then I would uh, uh, power the instrument down or go back to the main menu um, and make any changes for the next user. Uh, but in this case, we've finished the demonstration, so we'll shut it down. And that concludes our setup and operational demonstration of the Electromicroscopy Sciences 7000 SMZ2 vibrating uh, microtome. Thank you for your attention.